Thank you, Kara. Grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are halfway through Lent. We are halfway through our 40 days in the Word, and in about three weeks we'll be coming up to Palm Sunday already. Can you believe it? But in case you haven't joined us on Wednesday, we have an afternoon study at 12 o'clock and uh, also an evening meal that night that you're welcome to join. And uh, it's just a brief service and then uh, continuing with our 40 days in the Word. And like I say, you can join us at any time, small group sharing. You can go to 40daysoftheword.com and they have some really interesting uh, devotionals if you haven't checked those out. Um, they're not a burden. They're really kind of cool because they're by a different pastor every day and different message. And it doesn't, you can't expect them. I mean, they're just all also different. But they're really good to, uh, to use if you want to share those with a friend. It's a great evangelism tool. Pull out your iPad and say, hey, look what I saw this morning. You don't even have to say a word. Just let it do the work itself because the word does the work. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, the message, and... We get that from Romans, from St. Paul. So, memory verse number one, going back, is let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Number two, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Memory verse number three, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, but do the word. Do what it says, and this week's memory verse, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The passage for today can go in about 20 different directions, and I'm going to be very brief about this and just, uh, and just cover it just so, so briefly. Yeah, Pastor Ken, you always say you're going to be brief. You're never brief, but I really am going to be brief today, so trust me. Got hope. We are uh, really good at talk about, talking about sharing our faith. And some of us even have mustered up the courage to share our faith in different ways. We use, we use books. We use... Um, opportunities, things that happen, maybe phone calls and letters and, and emails, and, and some of us are getting really good at sharing our faith, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's hard. I know it's, it's a struggle, because uh, you've got to get real. You've got to get intimate. You've got to be vulnerable to share your faith with someone, and that's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? But today I want to ask you, have you ever thought about sharing your hope, about sharing your hope? Pastor Rick Warren tells a story once, and he says, on a good day, his dad was a fair preacher. He was raised in a Baptist church. He says, that just wasn't his dad's gift. He was a, he was a pastor, but being a preacher it just kind of wasn't there for him. But what he was great at, what his gift was building churches. Pastor Warren's dad built over 150 churches in all countries of the world. He built them in South America, he built them all over America, North America, Canada, in the Holy Land, in Europe. And finally, at 76 years of, old, years of age, he was feeling, he's feeling his age. In fact, if you can imagine grabbing, grabbing a group of guys and just hammering out churches year after year, that hard work took a toll on his physical being. And so at 76, he talked to Rick, and he says, Rick, I think I got one more ch church left in me. Rick says, Dad, I don't even think you got a cup of coffee left in you. But he says, nope, I'm going to Siberia. I've never built a church in Siberia. And Rick Warren says the last time he saw his dad was he saw a picture of him on a roof in a church in Siberia, hammering away. That's hope. Hope is when you know the odds are against you, but you keep going. Have you ever shared your hope with someone? The people see you as a messenger of hope because people are deficient in hope. There's nowhere to get it. Where can you buy hope? I grew up in this uh, area of town, uh, the Lake Erie section of the country. And the time when I was a kid at the Cuyahoga River, well, it kind of looked like this. You stick your hand in and it comes out black. And that's what the kids got to swim in and try to fish in. And it just wasn't a pleasant sight. In fact, it got so out of hand that 
the rivers and the lakes started burning. You imagine going out to go fishing and a lake is on fire because they were so polluted. These were hopeless, hopeless lakes. And everybody kind of wrote them off as, we don't even want to go near them. People were abandoning their homes, didn't even want to live near these places because they were so polluted from the steel mills and all the factories and people just dumping waste into these rivers. And if you lived around there, well, you thought your life expectancy would be cut short. But for some reason, little by little, things started clearing up. In a hopeless, hopeless situation of clean water, began to change. And today people swim there, they kayak there, there's even fish there. And it's turned into beautiful rivers in a beautiful place. And nobody really knows why. Why did it go from so, being so polluted to not? Because there were so many companies involved. But people saw hope and they tried their best to do what they could do to change the situation. Today's gospel talks about a, a plant, a fig tree, a tree. And for the people in Jesus' day, they were expert farmers. They knew how to raise grapes. They knew how to produce olives and figs. In fact, they had a special technique for doing that, and it was putting fig trees together in vineyards. And they could then drape some of the, the vines across the top of the fig trees, and they would get even more sun and be even juicier grapes. In fact, they got so good at it, they would put in walnuts and fig trees and olives all together in a vineyard and had some type of reaction on the soil where it produced even better wine than you and I could possibly imagine. But Jesus tells a story about an owner going and talking to one of the managers and saying, what's wrong with this fig tree here? What's the problem? I don't see any figs. What are we going to do? And the vine dresser says, well, I guess we'll just kind of fertilize it a bit and come back and see what happens. Now, to these expert farmers, this would be a joke. It would be like, it would be like one of us going up to a Indy race car driver or racing team telling them how to rebuild the car and what's wrong. Well, let's do this. Let's do this. These were expert farmers. And so this parable itself would be funny to them to see, well, you guys don't even get it. You know, if the figs aren't producing, you guys aren't putting in enough water. You just got to water it a little bit more. It's in the water. It's in the watering. They're thinking manure. They're thinking, well, we'll cut it down. They're thinking all these different things. And so for the people of Jesus' time, it's almost a comedy. But then they started thinking a minute, and they go, well, wait a minute, are you talking about fig trees, or are you talking about us? Who are you talking to in this parable? Are we really talking about fig trees? Are we talking about agriculture, or are you talking about people? And Jesus is talking about people. And he's talking about hope. He's talking about waiting another year before cutting down the tree. He's talking about giving time for fruit to be produced. He's talking about giving hope to people who had very little hope. How about you? Are you a producer of hope? Does your garden, do your trees produce hope for other people? Or is that something you don't even consider? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, which is easy to remember, 13, 13, and now these three abide, faith, hope, and love abide, and these three, and the greatest of these is love. But it's really a package. It's a faith, hope kind of love. Or is it a faith, love kind of hope? But they're all together. You can't separate them. You can't separate faith and hope and love. It's a package. So you can't talk about sharing your faith without sharing your love and sharing your hope. And you can't talk about sharing your love without sharing your faith and sharing your hope. And so it's part of our package to share our 
hope, as well as our love and our faith. And you go, it's okay for you, Pastor Ken, to do that because you know how to do it. But let me tell you, I'm just like you. I put my pants on and my shoes on and get dressed like anybody else. For us to share our hope is something we have to be intentional about. In fact, more than intentional, we have to be prayerful about it because there's nothing in us that'll let us do it. It's God working through us. It's God's spirit working through us, putting us in places where we can have opportunities to share our hope. In fact, there's one church, I don't know if you ever saw these people, you've probably seen them on the freeway. Everybody's got a cardboard sign. and They might be veterans, they might be homeless people. We'll work for food. Homeless, please help. Need food, need money. And then they're with their cardboard signs. Well, there's a church that thought, you know what? We're all those people. We're all the homeless people. We're all the hopeless people who need help. We're all people who could use a cardboard sign now and then to share with other people. So this one church decided to do that. They wanted to be messengers of hope. So the people who couldn't speak because they were too shy or embarrassed were invited to prepare their own cardboard signs about who they were to share with others. And there's always a front side and there's always the hope side. It's just regular people like you and I through a cardboard box shared their faith with one another. Because we all were here and through Christ are now here. Sharing our hope. I don't know if you can relate to any of these. We could all be people of hope. Anyone care for a cardboard sign? I've hidden my word in the heart that I might not sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive our tithes and offerings. <laughs> 